everyone. Today we're going to make a batch of maple butter. I've got this pot with about a gallon and a half. That's what I like to start boiling at so it don't boil over. I got that with a gallon and a half of maple syrup. I'm going to put however much that holds. I think it, it's uh, at least three gallons I put in there and I get them both cooked up to 234 degrees. After it's up at that temperature, we'll move to the water bath and I'll show you how you got to cool it below 80 degrees before you mix it. And that's what makes spreadable love. And just hang with me. It's going to be a couple of clips and we'll get this going. So I'll just take some pure South Four Farms 100% pure maple syrup and just pour it in here. I've already got this other uh, pan with uh, some syrup in it. I like to make as much as possible. And I started with five gallons, so it looks like I'm going to use all of this plus what's in the pan. So we're making five gallons of maple butter, which when it reduces, it's not quite five gallons. Because like I say, you cook us up to mm -hmm, 234 degrees. That's a little heavy. Maple syrup is 11 pounds per gallon. And uh, it gets a little bit heavy. So we'll get this fired up. I'll cook it a little high till it gets up to a little bit of temperature. Then I cut it down before it starts boiling. Get a nice simmer on it. That way it don't boil over. And we'll check back here in a little bit. Hey everybody, we're back. I moved it into the kitchen. I didn't want to steam up the kitchen too much while it was doing the majority of the cooking. As uh, you get closer to your target temperature, there's less steam. But when you're driving off a bunch of water, you got a lot of steam and uh, the uh, air conditioner just can't keep up with it. And once you make the butter, if you get moisture in it, it, it waters it down, so to speak, and you just got to keep the humidity down. So I'm getting ready to move the one. It's uh, up to temperature, the little pot. So we'll cut that uh, gas off. I'll go ahead and move the thermometer over a little bit and kind of walk it over so it don't pop it out of the pot while I'm moving it. And then we put it in this water bath. I don't know if you heard it sizzle or not. But I put it in a, it's a circulating water bath. I'll get that turned on here. Get a nice little stream. Stop the cooking. And that'll, that'll fill up. And that one there is almost ready to, to put in and cool. I got maybe, maybe a degree to go. And you can see probably how it's uh, boiling, foaming up. And with this uh, little spoon there, you always develop impurities. So you want to pull that off because that impedes the boil. Now these will cool. I can let them cool below 80. I can put them in the fridge overnight. But I just, my target temperature is 80 degrees. I want to get this done today. Because we had a good weekend sold a lot of products my beautiful bride sheila was up at glendale i was down in bell buckle and we deplete our products and as you saw with that big jug of syrup i make new products as we sell them off and keep everything nice and fresh so once i get this in the water bath and cooled i'm going to run and get a bag of ice because my day's getting away from me <laughs> i, I got to get this done but a bag of ice, that cold water will cool it down that much quicker. And uh, anyhow, I'll, I'll get this in and get it cooling. I'll run and get a bag of ice and we'll be back when it's below 80 degrees. And I'll put it over here in the machine and show you how thick it is. You put that thick, oh my gosh, it's like caramel. You put it in that machine and mix it. It develops short chains of sugar. And that's what makes it so creamy and smooth. Oh, you dip some strawberries in that. 
I tell you what, Sheila eats it on apples, bananas, strawberries, bagels. She'll dip pecans in it. I ice cakes with it. And my favorite is hot cinnamon rolls. Oh my goodness, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. But anyhow, we'll come back when we're getting ready to transfer it to the machine. Well, we're back this morning. I couldn't get this stuff cooled last yesterday evening because uh, it was such a big batch. It just didn't want to cool off. So we got it cooled down to 63 degrees. And I'll show you how thick this is as it comes out of here. Hopefully you can see it. I should start with the small one because I don't want to spill it. But you see how that oozes out? And that is 100% pure maple syrup that has been cooked up to the thread stage and cooled overnight. It only has to be below 80 degrees. But the beauty of maple butter production, you can let it cool overnight. Once you get it cooked up and get it in a water bath, you can... Uh, I like to let it cool a little bit before I put it in the fridge. This one I just covered and left in the water bath. And, uh, and, that, and you can walk away with it. With the candy, if you watch that video, you got to be on it and stay with it. But I had, uh, I had other things I had to do and it, it just got too late. And you're here all day waiting on this to cool down. It, uh, it's just something else. I guess I should have turned the machine on. One of these days, I'm gonna have everything. There we go. It's nice to have a long handle spoon. But I got that on. This is uh this candy cream machine has a one horsepower, or two horsepower motor. It's a gear reduction. Uh, has a high pressure gear pump for the high viscosity uh, liquid and I can do candy butter I can do syrup I was doing my uh, Lorange and vinaigrette in here but this is so hard to clean I started just using the filter canner because to tear this thing apart and clean and sanitize it and get all the cilantro out of it and uh, um, the uh, orange peel because I use orange zest in the maple citrus vinegar or in the maple the orange and uh, cilantro in the vinaigrette so I just go strictly with maple and uh, I wouldn't mind having another machine if uh, anybody wants to crowdfund a nearly five thousand dollar machine <laughs> I'm just teasing uh, but I tell you what, the maple has paid for everything you see going on. It's been, it's been a struggle, but uh, and it took several years. And you know, I'm not, I'm not making uh, a tremendous living, but it oh, it's so nice. You get to go places and meet a lot of people, and share the deliciousness of stuff they've never even heard of. I have to uh, describe a lot of it to Kentucky and Tennessee folks. And you get, I get people from up north that say, oh, I hadn't had maple cream, which is maple butter, since I was a kid. Or the same with the candy. And uh, this is one of the value added products. I tell you what, it when nothing else sells, this maple butter will sell for you if you choose to make it. You can only do about a quart by hand because you have to stir it for 20 minutes. Now this is uh, running at like 1,725 RPM. Of course with that gear reduction motor, I'm not exactly sure how fast um, the actual pump is running but it's uh it's not slow it uh it just takes a lot to get that this heavy deliciousness and you could boy i tell you what you could cook it up to the thread stage and 
cool it. You wouldn't have to cool it. But this is how they do sugar and on snow, if you've ever heard of that. They will take this with a ladle while it's still hot and still boiling and just pour it out on the packed snow. If I did it here, I would do a block of ice. And then they put a popsicle stick in it and roll it up, twirl it up, and it's like a, I guess like a, uh, a, sl a slow, slow pop or something like that. Wasn't prepared to think of that word, but anyhow, it's, uh, that's how a lot of them eat it up there when they have their open houses. I'm not going to do it. That's, uh, but I'll show you, I'll tell you how. You boil the maple syrup up to 220, 34 degrees. That's what this went to yesterday. And if you put it on a big block of ice, just just pour it out like that right there. But it's, of course, still hot, and you just pour a little string across it, put your popsicle stick on it, and roll it up, and that ice makes it hard like a, oh gosh, what is that candy? It's almost like a taffy, but it's on a stick, and it melts in your mouth. The ones I've seen, I've seen before and had or chocolate, and I swear I cannot think of the name of that candy. But anyway, I know some of you are screaming at me. But anyhow, this is what you do. And this has got some air bubbles in it, but you can see how this is starting to get a little bit creamy. You see this uh, area right here. And that uh, once it starts getting creamy, it's like a seed. You get it in there and it, it speeds it along. And if I had a little leftover maple butter, I could put a glob of it in there and it would, it would speed up the process. So if you ever make it at home and just doing a quart at a time, you can... Uh, get that out of there I'll finish that here in a minute I'm gonna yak and uh, but you can uh, get that uh, cooked up and if you already have a little jar of maple butter or a container take a spoon of that and put it in your so two what is that uh, two quart saucepan and uh, because really that's all you want to stir by hand when you've got it that thick but you put that in a two quart saucepan add a little already made maple butter and it will it will go a whole lot quicker but as this does that's uh this holds four gallons when it's completely completely full i started with five yesterday and that's how much it cooked down because that's that's everything you saw me pour out of that five gallon can so I've got less than three gallons, but that's going to make a whole lot of jars of pure maple butter. That's spreadable love. And anyway, I have to work it down in there. And I'll come back when this gets a little more creamy. I'm going to add, scrape these out a little bit more, get all that deliciousness out of them pans. And then I'll be back here shortly. I got to wipe my cord off too. I got a little bit, a little bit of that thickened syrup on it. But I'll see you in a minute. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, and I'm going to show you how, it, how you got to kind of work it while it's in this machine. I've been working on that side, and I still have this side to go. And once you get the maple butter home, and you use some, you put it in the fridge, it'll last a year in the fridge if you got that much willpower. But uh, anyway, uh, usually just leave it setting out. You can see how creamy it's getting. It'll firm up a little bit, but you just work it some and it'll loosen up. There's been times I've maybe overcooked it or was no humidity. It'll get so thick you think, I ain't ever gonna loosen it up. But what I do at that point, I just pour a little dab of pure, same grade maple syrup in there and let it mix, that will thin it out and it's still maple butter. But when, uh, 
when you get it at home and you hadn't used it in a while, it may separate and what will be on top is a lot thinner than this, but you just stir that back in and I'll get all this worked up and let it mix a little more and then I'll start pouring it in the jars because I don't want it to come out in the jar half mixed. I want it to be as fully mixed as possible and it still separates. It's like peanut butter. You know, oil will come to the top. But this is just some, oh, this is so good. Anything you want icing on, use this maple butter for, we did some on some uh, chocolate, uh, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, cupcakes. My beautiful bride, Sheila, made some cupcakes the other night. And instead of putting uh, cream cheese icing or chocolate icing on it, we just use the maple butter. Oh, it's so good. Maple and chocolate are lovers, as I talk about in some of my recipes in the cookbook. Alrighty. But anyhow, I'm going to work on this some, um, get it all mixed up thoroughly, and when I come back, I'll have a video down here and uh, or over there and show you how I put it in the jars. I got my commercial scale. It's a scale that's uh, been uh, certified for trade and that's what you got to have if you're going to sell something. So I put six ounces of this thickened maple butter into a four ounce jelly jar. And like you saw yesterday when I lifted that pan up there, and it's so hot, you got to be careful. And that makes it that much heavier. I tell you what, every 100 degrees makes, uh, let's see, that was probably, I don't know, 30, that was probably three and a half gallons. So uh, that would have been 33, it would have been... 45 46 pounds plus plus the pan weighs I don't know a pound and a half but every 100 degrees makes something that like that feel 20 pounds heavier and that was up to 200 degrees I tell you what you got to be careful you don't want to slosh it because you get that on you it won't stop burning until it gets to the bone and uh, anyhow uh, I tell you what, the train derails all the time. I lost the train of thought. But that's what you do, and we'll be back here in a minute. Okay, here we are getting ready to put the maple butter in the jars. And what I did, I was sitting here thinking I did a video. I forgot to put it on video, so I had a photo when I started. I had a photo when I finished, and now I'm going to do the video. So I've already got five jars made up i take a four ounce jelly jar these are crystal quilted some of them are smooth sided i've already got my scale tear that means i zeroed it i put a jar on it and it goes to zero when i push the tear button because tear weight is minus whatever container that you have and that's something that you might learn if you're four or five six years old that's what tear and it's t-a-r-e tear weight but anyway you put that jelly jar on there you know you're starting at zero and what i do with the first jar is i fill it up like this right here and get it up to exactly six ounces and then i can look and see how full it gets up to 5.6 you better slow down because you can overfill it real quick that way I can gauge how full it is and I can set the jar under there and just eyeball it and then put it on the scale to make sure it's exactly right. This is a commercial scale. It has been calibrated by the state, weights and measures. And now I see how full that is. I can put my lid on there. And these are two-piece jelly jars just like uh, any canning jar. That's what they are and i've got this label here it's got the nutrition on the back it used to be four pieces and i would explain stuff about maple 
but the one somebody told me said I would look at that one time and throw it away you're wasting money and they're right because I run my mouth and tell people about it and it's on my website too everything about it and you get to watch this video and see the whole process but this has all the required information if you want to sell anything so this is hermetically sealed means it's just air can't get in uh, but it's not hot packed uh, but this will last in the fridge up to a year if you have that much willpower and that's the finished product right there now we get these done I can just sit here because I know how how much I got to put in it and I hit that one just right some of them I go a little bit over and if it's as uh, long as that lid fits on it without getting into the maple butter then I'll go ahead and sell it if I get too much in it which it can happen then I've already got this ready to go I can dip a little bit out of one jar and put it into the other one put that right there I keep it up there I got me a damp paper towel to clean up my messes my fingers while I'm doing this and we get it get it production going as good as we can Sheila eats this on bagels apples bananas strawberries ice cakes with it I like it best on hot cinnamon rolls that one went up to 6-2 let's look I still got some clearance for the lid so somebody's going to get a 0.2 ounce little extra treat so you might have to buy several of these and that way you've got a good chance of getting just a little bit extra but it'll never be under six ounces yeah Sheila gets uh, blueberry bagels and toast them and uh, that one's right on it and she'll put a, just a little smear on, the, on them because uh, it doesn't take much a little dab goes a long way this will ice a small cake it, I mean you just don't want to glob it on too much well you might okay buy two jars then but uh, this creamy deliciousness I had I told you I had that woman that told me she'd eat it on a flip-flop and I've got a lady that mixes mustard with it and uses it on ham sandwiches but if you look at the recipes in my cookbook I have a maple mayo I have a maple aioli that's for some spicy crab cakes and that whole recipes in there and with the aioli you start uh, with the uh, uh, mayonnaise and that's why I have the maple mayo uh, kind of I say stop here if you want maple mayo for your ham sandwiches or whatever and then you go ahead and do the the ingredients to make the aioli and it, it's just it, it's good stuff I've got several recipes with sauces and and spreads like that so you can check that out online and you can download them individually uh oh and that's what I was talking about messes that's why I have a damp paper towel just wipe that off it's all clean and everything but you can't just let it string out over the side and that's that's just part of doing stuff I bought what did I have I had some pepperoncini and uh, the thing was sealed and they teach you this in the acidified food manufacturing school it was sealed it was it wasn't getting any air but one of the stems was up over the edge of the jar when I opened it it was hanging out the outside was dried but it was on tight enough it didn't hurt the product but it could and that's the things you have to watch for and I have to inspect the jars I had one I got it sitting on top of my fridge if you come out uh, for a tour open house uh, I'll show it to you it's got something black in the glass you can't feel it but I reject that and one of the lids did not have the uh, plastisol lining that little rubber ring and this plastisol one of the lids didn't have it so I inspect all of that I inspect the lids on the uh, sauce bottles for the Lavrange and vinaigrette and you have to 
Uh, it's just, I've been in manufacturing environments because I've got 35 years experience fixing industrial equipment. So I know how fast stuff comes through. And it's easy to see how something can get overlooked. But when you get down to the final nuts and bolts of it, you've got to inspect it and make sure it's just right. Because I want you to have the best thing possible. I want it to be sealed, secure, and safe. And I, I want you to enjoy it. And I want it to be the best thing you've ever put in your mouth. But till the next video, just keep watching. Catch us at one of the events. Our schedule's on a drop-down menu on our website. It says where to buy. That shows the stores and gift shops we're in also. And we're trying to get into more stores. So if you know of any little gift shops that need some Kentucky Proud Maple products, have them give me a call. And we'll, we'll see what we can do. But uh, you all have a blessed day and enjoy.